Hello and welcome back to yet another educational video series by yours truly New York Stilo. I know it's been a while since I've released my last episode, but today we're going to get busy here. We're going to start a two part video series on how to set up a Sumperfugium. And you know, I'm going to offer you guys some tips and tricks that you might pick up on and want to possibly incorporate them into your set up here. Now with this first part of the video, we're going to cover this 90 gallon Sumperfugium down below. Uh, um, part two of the video, it, we're basically going to cover the 30 gallon nanos hang on the back refugium. You don't want to miss the second part of this video series because I've used that 30 gallon nano as an experimentation tank. I've done all kinds of things to it and we're, that hang on the back refugium has been through hell and back. And I definitely want to touch up on what's going to happen here in part two of the series. So uh, we're going to move on here uh, quickly to the Sumperfugium down below. Before we do that, though, I wanted to mention that because I haven't uploaded a video recently, a lot of people have been asking me, well, you know, what happened to your system? Is it still alive and kicking? Absolutely. You can see it here with your own eyes. And for those of you who are unaware that I have a Facebook page, um, I'm going to put the link in the description down, box down below. I basically upload pictures almost on a daily basis and start discussions with my uh, subscribers. So if you go there and you like the Facebook and you follow me on Facebook, you'll be able to be a, more aware of what's going on with the system despite the fact that I, you know, I may not upload a video as fast as I normally do. But we're going to start cooking here and we're going to move on down to the Sumperfugium down below here and what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look at some of the changes that I've done here. You're going to notice immediately that I don't have a deep sand bed anymore. So stay tuned and let's take a closer look. We will be right back. Okay, so now that we're quickly back here, we have a better angle at the overall sun perfusion. I wanted to touch up on a couple of aspects regarding the overall setup and which ways you can choose to go to uh, if you want to go ahead and set up a sun perfusion down below inside of a stand in the way that you see it here. Now, of course, a lot of you who have been following my videos know that I cover the details like no other. So we've got a lot to cover here, guys. So sit back, relax, grab some popcorn if you can, and let's get busy here. We're gonna start with the plumbing. Now the plumbing, this is important, because there's two ways that you can plumb a Sumperfugium down below. You can either use flexible tubing, or you can use PVC and hard plumb the entire system. Now there's no wrong way for you to do that. In other words, you can't go wrong with each either or. Uh, you, whether you use flexible tubing or hard plumb the system, you will be successful. However, there are some pros and cons to each and every one of them. I can honestly tell you that every single one of my systems that I've had in the past decade have been set up with flexible tubing. And I'm gonna tell you why here. Um, every other system that I've set up outside that's not my system, I've done it in PVC. And it's because it looks a lot nicer. It looks a lot neater when you hard plumb the system. However, the reason why I've chosen uh, flexible tubing is basically there's pros and cons to each and every one of them. And I think using flexible tubing is a lot easier in some aspects, okay? Number one, it's a lot less expensive to use than going back and forth to Home Depot and picking up pieces here and there so you can hard plumb the system, you know? It's basically a lot less inexpensive. So that's number one. Number two, you tend to lose a lot more flow when you hard plumb the system due to back pressure than you would when you use flexible tubing. Every time your return pump shoots the water up and the water has to travel through these uh, 90 degree elbows and turns and everything before it reaches up in the main display, every time it goes through these turns, these sharp turns, the pump loses some pressure. So if you have a pump that say for example 1200 gallons per hour, by the time the, the, the water reaches the top of the tank, it will be diminished by several hundred uh, gallons per hour. So 
a 12 100 gallon per hour pump might end up giving you about 800 or 700 or even 600 gallons per hour whereas if you use flexible tubing you won't have as much turns and everything else and there will be a lot more flow available for the system number three number three is basically that if you want to make changes to the setup it's a lot more difficult to do when you hard plumb the tank than as opposed to removing uh, the flexible tubing and just making the changes up rather quickly. So there's those three top reasons why I tend to lean towards using uh, flexible tubing. Whether or not you decide to go, once again, I want to repeat this, hard plumb the system or use flexible tubing, you will be successful either way, guys. So the choice is yours. Now, we're going to move on to talking about which sumperfugium I decided to use. You know, any sumperfugium is better than no refugium. Of course, the bigger it is, the more effective it is going to work as a filtration system. In this case, I've used the Trigger System sumperfugium modeled after the 36S. Now, in my case, I contacted the company and had them you know make it longer so this one in particular is 36 inches long by 15 inches wide by 15 inches tall it is extremely important that before you get any sumperfugium you absolutely make sure that you measure in detail the space that you have below you have to take into consideration any um, beams that the stand may have in order for you to make sure that you can easily insert this sumperfugium into the stand. If you, you run into problems, and I've seen this happen so many times before, and I've gotten so many questions on this, it's just, it's gonna make your day a living hell. Make sure that you measure it properly. Now, if you want more information on this particular sumperfugium, the trigger system, I've created a video and did so in the past, reviewing it in detail. I'm gonna put a link in the description box down below so you can reach that video a lot easier. Now, the third aspect I wanted to touch up before we get closer to the subterfugium and discuss it in detail is the noise factor. Now, this is such a common question on my channel in private messages. I constantly get asked, why is it that I'm hearing a gurgling noise? Why is it that I can't sleep at night because I'm hearing excessive noise coming out of the sumperfugium? There's two reasons for that, okay? Number one, you didn't properly take the steps to somewhat seal your stand. I say somewhat because of course, you don't wanna make sure that you seal the entire stand shut. Obviously, you have to have some sort of fresh air coming into the stand to circulate. So what I did in my case was I took a big piece of plywood, I cut it to specification and left an opening on the back and installed it in the back there so that less noise would be coming out of the sumperfugium. But I made absolutely sure that I had some air coming into the stand. And as a matter of fact, I've gone ahead and added a fan that's bringing in air from the outside into the stand. This is very important. But if you're hearing excessive noise, you might want to take the necessary steps to somewhat seal the stand. Now, number two reason why you would hear noise is the gurgling sound. Commonly gets asked in uh, my channel, why am I hearing all this gurgling? You know, there's, there's one solution for that. And it's very simple. It's a dorsal standpipe. That's what it's called. Um, I covered that in earlier videos. One of my videos titled must do maintenance every six months or something. I'm going to put a link down in the description box down below also for that video. The dorsal standpipe, the problem is that a lot of hobbyists, they decide to build it on their own or they don't have one in general. So if you don't have one, you're going to hear that gurgling noise coming down. But those of you who decide to build it on your own and do it incorrectly and don't allow a big enough hole on the top of the dorsal standpipe for it to breathe properly are going to experience that gurgling noise. So in my case, I didn't have that problem because I bought an overflow kit. The overflow kit bought a properly sized 
and properly set up dorsal standpipe and so I don't hear that gurgling noise. But this is something that is easy to fix. If you can just you know, take some time and do some research on the dorsal standpipe, you will come up with a solution for that excess noise. Now, last but not least here, guys, I wanted to mention that it is extremely important for your setup to be nice and neat. If you're gonna add a reef keeper light system, if you're gonna go ahead and install a reactor or a calc washer reactor or a calcium reactor, any equipment that you wanna add in there, you wanna try to be as neat as possible. Being neat means that when you come back and, you, and you're gonna work on your system, it's not gonna feel so much like a burden. And you have all these things flying, you know, wires all over the place and an incorrect setup. We're gonna take a closer look at what I've done with the Reef Keeper light system and everything down here below, and we're going to take a zoom in close up on how I've set it up and discuss each and every one of these stages. So uh, bear with me, we will be right back with that close up. Okay, so now we're actually a lot closer to the tank, and we're looking at the bottom of my 90 gallon tanks dual drains and dual return. Now I wanted to mention quickly here that almost every single 90 gallon system you're gonna find out there today likely only has one drain and one return. There's nothing wrong with that. It'll work just as effectively as this particular tank which actually, you know, is designed for more flow. You know, it's, it's basically a little bit more leaning towards the setup of a reef and it brings two drains and two returns. And while they don't manufacture this 90 gallon tech tank anymore, you can actually, if you wish, you could contact the manufacturer of say, an acrylic tank uh, maker and have them design you a tank just like this. But just know for a fact that if you only have one drain on your 90 gallon system, it's gonna work just as good. Now you're going to see here, next to the drains and the returns, the Reef Keeper Light um, setup here. I've got the modules uh, neatly uh, here. Uh, made sure that I installed them away from the water where it's not gonna splash up to it. And I also made sure that I labeled each and every one of my equipment. This is also important that I relay that message to you guys. Once again, if you're not neat about it, you're just gonna be struggling trying to find which pump is which. And you know, it's just gonna run into a big headache for you. So this is what the Sumperfugium looks like on the top here. You can see it there. And you can see I have one module there and another module over on this side here. Now, the drains here, as I mentioned before, you know, if you only have one and your sump in particular brings two bulkheads, it doesn't matter. You can basically just use one of the bulkheads and leave the other one be. But in this particular case here, I've got two drains, which are basically the ribbed um, kinky tubing that you see here. Now this is another question that I get commonly asked. Where did you get this kinky gray um, rigid tubing? If you go to Google, guys, if you go to Google and you type in wet dry filter drain kit, you're gonna find it. It's probably gonna come with silicone so you can size it properly as I've done with this one here. You can see that I've basically cut it to specification so it can go straight into that drain there. Um, and it's gonna bring that silicone so you could cut it, add the new piece and you know put it together. Now I mentioned hard plumbing earlier and although this is mainly done with flexible tubing here um, I did have to use some PVC and you're likely to have to do that as well if your sump perfusion comes with bulkheads in most cases it either comes with the kinky tubing and the pieces that you need in my case I had to go to Home Depot and get these uh, pieces of PVC here it's not that difficult to figure out but the water basically drains from the two kinky tubing that you see here, the gray tubing, and enters the first stage. Now this first stage here is basically, you know, gravity water feeds from the tank down into the sump refugium. Now because I use strong water flow in this tank, 
um, with a Mag Drive 18 because it has a dual overflow, I'm able to get very strong flow in this first stage, which is very important here. We're gonna back up the camera. Let me go ahead here and turn this light around, which is my LED. But I wanna focus mainly on the first stage here. I'm gonna cover this for you guys in as much detail as possible. Now this is the first stage. I've created this stage and requested that the stage be 17 inches by 15 inches. And that's because I wanted to add uh, this Aqua CEV uh, 240 to this setup. It's an awesome protein skimmer and because it is large, you know, I had to make sure that this stage was big enough. And this is another, and I go back to earlier in the video, make sure that you have an idea of what protein skimmer you wanna add before you have the Sumperfusion built or before you build it yourself or before you have it ordered. And make sure you go online and you, you know, look up those measurements to be sure that this system is going to fit. Now, in my case here, I removed the filter socks, okay? There's a couple of reasons why here. You know, the filter socks basically traps uh, waste and creates more nitrates and whatnot, and, and I didn't want that in the system. And there's also the reason that I wanted everything to flow through the system as much as possible, to feed the corals and stuff. When you have uh, filter socks here in the back, you know, it's it somewhat prevents that. Plus, there's the added, you know, work that you have to do that you, you know these filter socks they get they get um clogged up really fast and easy and so you're gonna have to come back and do it but it is entirely up to you uh, whether or not you want to deal with the filter socks and you can go ahead and do that now because i have the space here on this first stage and because i only added 50 pounds of live rock on the main display i've gone ahead and added an extra 40 pounds behind the protein skimmer however I don't recommend you to do that unless you have that strong water flow. We're gonna move the camera back a little bit here more. Sorry about that clicking noise. It's actually uh, the cap on the camera. And you're gonna notice I actually have positioned down below another maxi jet pump on this first stage. Let me see if I can get this so you guys can see this clearly. And you can see that maxi jet pump, which is basically pointing towards the bottom of the protein skimmer. The protein skimmer needed to be lifted up off the ground um, a few inches so that the output of the skimmer is above the water. This is how most protein skimmers work properly. So because I wanted this first stage to be maintenance free, I've got that live rock in the back. I've got that strong pressure coming down from the dual drains, blasting the ground, preventing detritus from settling there. And then I've got an extra maxi jet uh, 1200 that's just keeping the water moving in this first stage. And you can see it there. I mean, it's, it's just, there's constant water movement in this stage, preventing that detritus from settling there. So this is just a tip and trick for you guys. For those of you who have enough space, if you don't want to deal with siphoning uh, that detritus, add a small power head in this first stage. Keep that detritus suspended, let the protein skimmer remove it from the system. Now last but not least, from this first stage, I've got the pump of the protein skimmer behind the MaxiJet 1200, and of course I have here my two probes. I've got my pH probe, and I've got my temperature probe. Also, I also have here, you're gonna see this black tubing that's coming down here in the center is basically the tubing that delivers the Kalkwasar solution into the first stage. This is important also. You don't want that Kalkwasar solution uh, being delivered to the last stage because it's gonna, um, it's not gonna mix properly before it enters the main display. So it's recommended, at least I recommend you, you know, to make sure that it drips into uh, the first stage. Also wanted to quickly mention that on top of the live rock, I have this bag of Kemi Pure Elite. Um, I tend to use four bags of Kemi Pure Elite, but in reality, I'm only using uh, three bags. I basically take the three that I have to replace, add one here, 
and just replace the three new ones into the last stage. So that basically covers the first stage. Now we're gonna move on to the refugium stage. This is the most important here. Now, you're gonna notice some differences here. Uh, for starters, I'm using LEDs now. These particular LEDs are working just beautifully. I mean, you can see here, um, I've got, you know, the Catomorpha, which is a massive, huge growth in the back. And then I've got some Gracilaria uh, here in the front. But here's the thing about the, the, uh, the algae that you use in a refugium. It's important for you to just stick with Catomorpha. Why I say that? Because Catomorpha is just gonna continue to grow and it's not gonna die out as easily as any other macroalgae. It really is the hardiest of them all. On top of that, it doesn't leak chemicals back into the water as the Gracilaria will do. For example, this particular algae, the one that you see in the front with the strands, can go asexual and most other macroalgae will go asexual. If it goes asexual, it basically starts to die out in order to reproduce and releases everything that it has consumed. All that uh, nitrates, phosphates, everything, it's just gonna release it back into the water column. You're gonna experience, you know, more than normal growth of nuisance algae and it's just, you know, it's problematic. However, I can honestly tell you that if you light your refugium, 24 hours a day it is likely that your macroalgae will not go asexual it only happens during the night so we've covered the algae here I highly recommend you to just use catomorpha just to avoid the problems now you're gonna see that I've got one inch of miracle mud only and you're gonna notice that I've got very little rock in that first in that refugium stage this is a very common misconception that I see a lot of people doing. They take the refugium and they fill it up with rock. The rock is basically going to become a detritus trap. You know, the detritus is gonna settle beneath the rock and it's just gonna become extremely problematic in the down road. You wanna keep as least amount of rock in the refugium as possible, but you do wanna keep some rock and I do recommend you to initially add a large piece of rock to seed the bed that you have down below. Now in this case I have one inch of Miracle Mud. Before this I had three inches of sand and one inch of Miracle Mud on top. I've done this for experimentation purposes only. I've gone ahead and because I already have a deep sand bed in the main display I've decided to go ahead and just add one inch of Miracle Mud only and I've been doing this now for approximately a little more than six months I can honestly tell you that a deep sand bed will basically put your skimmer to shame in all honesty here I mean when I had the deep sand bed my skimmer didn't produce as much and once I removed it and just kept it a one inch of miracle mud the skimmer has been going crazy ever since and you know so deep sand beds are absolutely beneficial to have but they do work best when you have a larger surface area. It's gonna work a lot better in your main display than in a small area here. And this leads to what we're gonna talk about in part two when we get to the 30 gallon nano system hang on the back refugium. I'm gonna show you the hell that, that some refugium went through because I tried to add a deep sand bed there. So, I've covered the refugium stage. If there's anything I've missed, uh, you guys can post any questions down below. The media stage here, Quite simple and easy to understand, especially with this particular sump. I basically just put, um, it has a foam pad on the top, preventing any of that excess macroalgae to make it into the last stage and clog up the pumps. And it also serves as a media stage for my Chemi Pure Elite. I basically put three bags of Chemi Pure Elite on this stage here to keep my system completely clean and filtered properly. Now, in this last stage here, you're also going to witness that there's a small maxi jet pump in the front here uh, using suction cups. 
and it's basically keeping the water moving in this last stage before it reaches up to the main display. This is important as stated earlier so that it can keep the detritus suspended. The only area in this entire sump refugium that I want detritus to settle is in the refugium stage only where it will be processed by the critters that live there so I don't have to deal with it. You know, this is very important and this is another tip or trick if you want to look at it that way which you might want to incorporate into your sump refugium. Now next to the Maxi Jet 1200, I've got a, a Mag Drive 18 pump, which basically uh, uses this black tubing here and returns it and splits into what you see here, which is a Y fitting, which returns it to each side of the returns up on top. So very easy to set up here. Uh, when it comes to this and this mag drive 18 as i mentioned earlier you know with all the twist and turn it's probably giving me somewhere around 12 to 1300 gallons per hour behind this mag drive 18 is yet another mag drive pump it's a mag drive 7 which is basically feeding the chiller and the chiller is basically outputting the water back into the main display this is uh, very important for me to keep this final stage with plenty of space so that I can incorporate these pumps needed in order for the system to run properly now last but not least we've got one last pump in there and that's another maxi jet uh, 1200 which is basically uh, controlling this reactor here with some roll foss and you can see uh, the roll foss there uh, you know working and keeping the system uh, phosphate free as much as possible now the last thing we're gonna cover here is the float switch this is another item that is installed here in this final stage and there's a reason why this final stage is the only stage that changes when it comes to the water level this particular setup has a design that it keeps the water level in the first and second stage constant a 10 inch deep water level and it never changes however there are some some perfusions that are set up differently where it does allow you to incorporate the float switch in the first stage in this case it's got to go into the final stage here this is my sump perfusion it's my pride and joy it's the heart of my filtration system it's what keeps the tank running and, you know properly and it's one of the main reasons why I haven't done a water change to the system in more than a year and a half I might create a video sometime in the future on is it possible for you to run a reef without doing any water changes so we're gonna discuss that hope you guys have enjoyed this particular video support my channel guys let me see those thumbs up let me see that you support my channel favorite my video if you can you know if I see that I see that you guys want me to release more videos and of course I'm gonna be on top of that I'm gonna try my best to start releasing videos on a weekly basis coming up is part two where we're going to be covering the hang on the back refugium on the 30 gallon nano system I know a lot of you do not want to miss this episode because obviously it's gonna feature the 30 gallon nano so with that said hope you guys have enjoyed this video here many more to come don't forget to rate my video guys with that said this is new york stilo signing out peace